coming in on some of the oldest known petroglyphs in North America. Sago Canyon 4. And there's an old graveyard up here too. And a ghost town. We're coming up on a ghost town, a graveyard, and some of the oldest petroglyphs in North America. As soon as we get stuck or something really bad happens, we'll be back. So here we are at some of the first petroglyphs. And <coughs> they're pretty modern. These are in the 500 to 1300 AD realm. We're looking for more of the pictographs with the color. And this clearly shows horses and what appears to be Spanish. Maybe conquistadors with metal helmets. And the Hopi medicine wheel. Looks like some maybe older stuff up there on the fin. But we're looking for the dark petroglyphs, the archaic ones, but we'll enjoy these too. Back of the canyon? Yeah, so Seiko Canyon is cosmic catastrophe center. Huge blocks, vertically etched walls close together. And the patina. Oh, the patina. Now, the Hopi and a lot of the Navajo legends say that is the blood of their enemies draining over the tops of the cliffs. Especially these black type streaks. Coming up. Right up there on the left. First uh, Petros? Yep, Petros, right up there on the left. First Petroglyphs coming up, folks. We've arrived. Day one. Now these petroglyphs here are way up off the ground. Ten. 25 feet. Take a look at that. Interesting geometric pattern there. Almost like a Kabbalistic tree of life. Obviously, Clay Whipple brought a ladder able to deface this rock. Yeah, this is very interesting right here. Another thing of note here is the sheep are not known here at all so, to be indigenous. And, then we, uh, and there's Bart Simpson's head again which we've seen at every location I've ever been to. A version of it. Nice deep petroglyph there. The peen style. And then more of those bighorn sheep that don't exist in this valley. Could it be a constellation? And that's what these dots are above it? In here? Or is that gunshots probably from scared people? It's just really bad lighting. Call out for Gay Whipple. This, I think the sun's going to clear up for us here pretty quick. So you can see the archaic glyphs behind here, which we can get a better panel of these. 
You can kind of see it when I zoom out a little better. Maybe if I come under it. And it seems to be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, six people there. Six figures, six apparitions. And then this larger one holding hands out. And then the other guy's got something flowing. Where'd it go? Flowing out of his hand there. So these are the archaic pictographs made with hematite. Could be up to 9,000, could even be 13,000 years old. Okay, we're about, we're approaching some of the oldest petroglyphs in North America. This is called the barrier style. And many people have mislabeled these as aliens or robots, I think. There's a much deeper meaning. These were probably personifications of unexplainable events. So significant. I mean, the amount of work. The smaller one to the far right, a smaller one now. That guy looks like a different color, a different era. Brought this up last time to the far right there. And then, like you oh said, something looks like it got blown off. There's probably a bunch more written on. So we see some amazing defacing here. This is the unfortunate thing about what happens here. But. Oh, hey, there's that, that's on your shirt right there, Diamond. Oh, look my God. Boom. Here, grab this. As Diamond would say, we just look at it. Right there. Diamond's wearing that on his shirt, that exact same symbol on his shirt from a Go plasma out. event. You can see it right there. And then what's that? Oh, here's Matates up here. Matates. Where they, were, where they were grinding. Yeah, I, was showing, I thought those were footprints. No, that's where they were grinding. They were grinding stuff there. Corn. Okay, okay, corn. So, not footprints, they were grinding corn up there. Where is it? Right there, I'll show you. Absolutely, look. Yeah, see that? Yeah. And so, just get this. There's the shirt. And that's then here's diamond. the associated all around the world. Same glyphs. Same glyphs. What they were seeing in the skies. Now, Diamond and I disagree on a couple of things, and that is, on some of this, I do, I do think the majority of this is what they were seeing in the heavens, but I do wonder, and not on these ones, but if we go over here, let me, if you can zoom in, you can zoom in with your camera too, right over there, you're going to see the life-size petroglyphs. And there's one over there. This is my hypothesis, folks. I think that those beans were here before the event that created the canyon lands and much of this cataclysm. I think those were the guys that were here helping humanity. Now there's also, if you look to the far right or to the far left of that one, you're gonna see the one that looks like a robot the most. Where it's got antennas and it's got an antenna system then it's got a straight line that connects the antenna systems. So I feel that those, that this is my opinion, this is my hypothesis, my, my opinion. We're gonna go over there for close-ups because yes. we're here. Because <laughs> we're here, but that, that's, I think they, those were, I think those ones are even older than these ones. Yeah. That's what I think. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a conspiracy scientist. In my favorite place, the grandma's garage. She's not here anymore. Diamond thinks I'm crazy though, that's a display. Yeah, that would be the jet. Be the polar jet. But this is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think that's like one of the oldest ones right there. What do you think? The black one? Yeah, and you can yeah. see the antennas on that guy too. <laughs> yeah. And the most significant because it's the only one with all those colors. Okay. I see that. Clearly that antennae, which in the Parat instability would be uh Plasma discharge? Yeah, it would be uh, polar jets that are coming out of a toroid and the two eyeballs are the, looking at a toroid on end. Which is like a, if we cut a donut in half, that's what you'd see, two eyeballs. But that's just an opinion. Now, this stuff, okay, I, I want, Diamond, will you talk about this for a minute? Yeah. 
while, while I got you here. So you feel that the majority of this, what we're looking at, was what they were seeing in the heavens. And I'm not disagreeing with you on that, but like what, if, like this guy right here, that looks a little bit different, unique. Yeah, there were. So the idea is that these are all different phases of an event, a solar outburst event. Okay. And each different phase changed. Uh, a lot of the legends come from this, and that's where we get the growing different types of growing antenna here, and the changing shapes and dynamics of holding things and bird heads and wearing hats and. And, and that's where the image of Thoth comes from because it is believed that this is probably recent. The Egyptians may have witnessed this. So we may be talking about an event maybe 6,000 years ago or recently. And we were just talking about a paper about a solar outburst 2,600 years ago. Yeah, and then there was, there was one that was in 995 AD that they said was about five times as bad as the Carrington event. And then there was one 200 years before that that was about that. They said actually the worst ones that they've got recorded were 775 AD and 660 BC. Okay, well these petroglyphs, the red hematite ones of the aliens and the mantis are probably six to 9,000 years, years old. So we're talking about a much earlier, more extreme event probably. And it could be the 12-9 event. Okay. Which could be a cosmic outburst. From our sun directly so if the sun went into some type of explosive mode it would go dim and we would see the uh, results of the magnetic field on the outside of the sun it would start to uh, it would start to act very differently and then we would see the Birkeland current sheath that connects the sun to the earth which would look like a, this long emanating uh, kind of robe that they have on these human figures and it would get larger as it went up towards the sun and the eyeballs we see here would be the end of the Taurus, which would be the toroidal field around the sun. And if you were a culture that didn't know what you were seeing, but it looked like a big scary ghost man, mm -hmm. and it was freaking you out, mm -hmm. you'd have to paint that. You would. You'd have to write it in stone, you, wouldn't you? You'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on uh, some more archaic panels. This is just sky anomalies, and this is just a question I'm asking. I don't know. If, if, why would they put these huge sky anomalies next to them? Like they're trying to give a figure, like a measurement. They're like, look at how big we are in comparison. Look at our width and our height. I don't know. This is what I'm thinking. There's two people clearly there. And then imagine during these cataclysmic events, let's say something that these beings come down to save humanity because they know what we have. Like Star Trek stuff. Diamond, am I crazy? Tell Diamond, am I crazy? Yeah. See, Diamond thinks I'm crazy. What do you think, Dan? Am I crazy? No, no, you won't have yet, but I think so. A little bit. Okay, good. I'm on the right track. You want to see the spring? How do I go to the end? Have to take a look at that. I'm seven foot, ladies and gentlemen, on the internet. You know everything's real on the internet. So. I'm 11, 11 two. Uh, Diamond's 11 foot two. So, yeah. Um, oh, be not, don't film that. <laughs> you gotta film these, man. But doesn't this look like the outline of a robot? Like an like antenna poking, and then what's that thing coming across there? You feel this is just electronic, something electric in the heavens. Diamond. I think it's a an anthropomorph. That word I'm trying to say, anthropomorphized version of what they're seeing. And it's changing from your you know, laser beam antennas to the weird single antenna. We've seen this a lot. We just saw it on the other side of the canyon. And then there's the single, and now the single has horns. So they're all like different versions. The and people were scared of them. Look at all the bullet holes, like a 45 shot well, here. What's up with Mary and Jane? <laughs> Like hanging out, like as a measurement. They're like, here, here's us. We're showing our size in comparison right here. And then look at all the stuff that's been. That looks like some type of, uh, like almost like a, I don't know, rhinoceros <laughs> or something, man. Look at some of the, And then look at the side. These are different animals and stuff that are carved in. Yeah. After. Man, they were scared of whatever this was. 
People beat this with rocks a lot. The, all these pock marks are from people that were trying to kill these entities. Or sh yeah, they were shooting at so, them. They were shooting practice. at them. It's terrible. And then look at the monkey man up there. Do you think that's newer, monkey man, up there? Yeah, that looks like Beavis and Butthead that someone painted up there. Well, I don't see Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> monkey man looks like a va like something out of the Vedas or something. Well, he's got a sword, right? And, oh, look at this. And a look mohawk. At look at this, man. Look at that. That looks like an animal. It's red. You see it? The outline right there? Diamond, do you see that? Oh yeah. What is that? Oh, that looks like uh, yeah, that's an animal. I didn't oh. see that before. And it's next to some other snake, like to the left. That's another one of the archaic. That's an old figures. One. Oh yeah, part of it's missing right there on that side. Sun's out. It came up from below freezing to well above. It's beautiful, and we're about to go across this rickety bridge. <sighs> so if we die, this is, this is a full timber I'm on. This is bombastic. Pretty beautiful here. Wish you guys were here. So we're standing here at a very significant spot here in Seiko Canyon. And the reason I'm gonna draw your attention here is to these ripple marks, these wavy ripples on the rock surface. This is what we call in geologic terms, conchoidal fracture. And you get these effects when you take a homogeneous material and you break it through violent shock. As if you were to take a glass bottle and smash it on the ground, you would get these conchoidal fractures on the flakes. Now, we're seeing them on the, this cliff. And the entire cliff face, which in my opinion means that something catastrophically exploded this entire region open. Very recently, with catastrophic blocks sitting on top of the mesa, laying on top of each other here, and more and more evidence of crazy, out of place, erratic blocks that we see as we're in this entire region. And now we see an entire region of cliff with conchoidal fracture, which means that they weren't quarrying here, but something blew up. 